earthly realm They did not see a king that soon would die They saw the kind of king that they immortalized He tore that picture down When he picked up off the ground And held in his arms a child He said Let the children come to me Let the children be One to inherit the kingdom For the faith of these Is the faith that will receive God's grace God's love God's love Let the children
Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to all of you on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. We use as our order of worship this morning the order of divine service setting for with Holy Communion um, with a few uh, changes um, as the band is going to accompany us today. We begin by singing, How Great is Our God. <coughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But the fear there is forgiveness, therefore we are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness 
and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the <coughs> infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Turn through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us, not in the severity of your judgment, but by the greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, I'd like the kids to come forward to help us with the next song.
We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready. But those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having heard the word of God, we make common confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with Father, I do all things with me, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our next song. <clears throat> is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest thing, but only trust in Jesus' name. Trust in Jesus' 
mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I recently read a story of someone who became so concerned that too many people today live detached and devoid of emotional connections within society. So he decided to do something about it. He reserved six dates over the course of a year to host six dinners at his home. Posting uh, his menu for each meal, he described via social media what he was offering and invited anyone to fill one of the eight seats at his table for each of those six evenings. Within 24 hours, all six evenings, all 48 seats were filled with a waiting list for cancellations. The people who came each night didn't know one another and were from various political, religious, social, and cultural backgrounds, ranging in age from 22 to 74 years old. Most evenings, the meal and after dinner conversations lasted three to four hours. Later, reflecting on the experience, the host said there's something refreshing about sitting at a table and breaking bread with strangers who are willing to let you into their personal lives. He summarized his year-long experience by saying there are three things he became convinced of after sitting with such a diverse group of people. It became obvious to him that people are hungry for conversation, connection, and community. And I believe those three elements can be seen in today's text from Isaiah. 
The prophet shows how much can happen when Jesus brings people together to receive conversation, connection, and community. Isaiah was God's chosen messenger to Judah. For many years, times were good, yet there was a spiritual void. Isaiah addresses the struggles and battles of life, personal as well as political. He was God's spokesman, announcing the Lord's judgment and calling for repentance. But he also spoke words of comfort and hope. At the beginning of chapter 25, Isaiah is unashamed to speak of his faith. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. His witness is bold and clear. And yet, Isaiah realizes this is not the case with everyone. In fact, as a result of the Lord's judgment, Babylon will be destroyed for its disobedience, idolatry, and rebellion. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The foreigner's palace is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. After living in exile, God's people would eventually return home. But this raises the question, who doesn't wonder today about some of the trials and challenges people face? Who doesn't ask why? Why are there natural disasters? Why do tragic incidences happen at times, even in our own communities? Why is a loved one facing physical illness? Why does it seem like there's so much confusion about what is wrong and what is right? And no one seems to have the answers. So we cry out to our God. Why, Lord? The answer to much of that is the effect of sin in our life, both personal and around us, resulting in the less than perfect world we live in. And because of this, Trials and tragedy do happen. There are times when people experience the consequences of their own sinful actions. But not, that is not always the truth. There isn't always a direct correlation between sin and trials and tribulations. Not sins of our own, at least. The world is sinful. There is sin in the world. And therefore, our lives, the lives of the world around us, aren't perfect. And because of this, trials and tragedy happen. Nor... Uh, Nevertheless, people are hungry to talk about why. Even though sometimes we do not understand, that question still comes, why do these things happen? And each time we ask that question, it's a reminder of the opportunity we have to share good news. The good news from Isaiah 25. Isaiah reminds us that the Lord is a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in distress. When was the last time you just sat and listened? When was the last time you let someone just talk and ask these questions about God? 
When was the last time you let them express exactly how they felt, what they were experiencing without feeling the need to defend God or explain his actions? There are times when people feel they are living in a heap and a room. Sometimes we can feel poor and needy. Sometimes what's needed is an opportunity for people to have a conversation to express what they're feeling and thinking and experiencing in this sin-sick life. Such conversations, then, can make connections. The text from Isaiah references a feast. This points to the reality that there are so many people who are hungering and thirsting for life. There are so many things that people are looking for, that they fill their lives with, uh, that don't ultimately satisfy. Maybe it's trying to fill our life with meaningful occupations or accumulating possessions or fulfilling relationships. Not that those are not important, but in the end, they will come up short. The true connection, then, comes from Isaiah's pure gospel. As Isaiah describes a lavish feast, he describes verse by verse what the Lord is doing. The Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food. He will swallow up the covering that is cast over peoples. He will swallow up death forever. He will wipe away tears from all faces. With one description after another, Isaiah wants his hearers to connect to just how gracious God is toward his people. And that connection comes ultimately through his son, Jesus Christ. Through his cross on Calvary and his empty tomb. Jesus makes a connection with us. By listening to us for pleas of mercy and forgiveness, he comes and dies for us, bearing our sin, taking it away, and in its place, giving you life, life eternal. Jesus comes to wipe away our tears. He swallows up death forever. He forgives our sins. He raises us to new life. He restores us to the Father. He offers us, therefore, hope. And what a wonderful message that connects us to our Savior, and to the people around us. Such a connection creates community, therefore, a communion of saints. You see, one of the goals of the gospel proclamation is kingdom growth. Paul says, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. When the gospel is preached, the good news, not only does it bring comfort to the faithful, but it also gathers the people of God together. Isaiah's final verses highlight that response to this feast of good news is for people to declare. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. With such a response, a community of believers comes together on earth as it is 
in heaven. Conversation, connection, community. What an opportunity the church has today. Too many people feel disconnected. Many are questioning and doubting. Some are even skeptical and struggling. But I invite you today to come and for conversation, be within the community, and to connect with your Savior, Jesus Christ, as he calls you to his feast, his feast of body and blood with the bread and wine his body, his blood that was given for each of you so that you might have connection and community. Let your conversation then proclaim God's great gospel of forgiveness, life, and salvation to everyone who will listen, to believers and unbelievers, to saints and sinners, consider the connections that could be made for openly sharing the gospel. In doing so, the community of believers grows in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly King, your Son, Jesus Christ, purchased the church with his precious blood. Preserve her in the pure teaching of your word, in the right use of the sacraments, and the unity of the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly King, you send out your invitation that all who believe in your Son should take their seats at his feet by the proclamation of your church. Gather many, however evil they may be, to repent and fill your eternal banquet hall. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly King, bless all families and the homes in which our people dwell. Grant grace to husbands and wives that they may fulfill their vocations to one another and to their children. Grant us also that, as a family, they may faithfully teach and learn the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, look with favor on those who celebrate birthdays, including Kermit Leet, Alyssa Cowell, Dylan Haldeman, Hallie Hebert, Ayla Radke, Allie Hansen, Amy Pankratz, Robert Hudson, Arvo Peterson, and Kim Nas. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly King, for whom we wait, you promise to wipe away the tears from all faces. We pray especially that you would bless Dave Albrecht, Leola Gore, Addison Jansen, Becky Crameen, Darlene Meyer, Bunyang Singsarachan, Puma Zavanara, Walter and Margaret Olchenbruns, John Easker, Donna Bacallier, Christy Amston, Danny Porish, Lynn Schwager, Leanna Taji, Caleb Reuger, a young, a young woman, and a man with cancer, and all who suffer illness. Attend to the daily cares and needs of Bev Falk, the Michael and Christine Hudson family, Kathy Johnson, and Paul and Ann Nibby. 
that all at the last they may be comforted, restored, and received into the banquet of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly King, give us such joy in pursuing what is true, just, pure, and worthy of praise that, spurning the temptations of this world, we would suffer no anxiety. Let our trust be placed fully in Christ and let our hope rest in the life of the world to come. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated as we gather our offerings. as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Beside the still waters, the pastures of green, the shepherd is waiting where all is serene. By day and by night, he will always be seen. Beside the still waters of peace, for he is a good shepherd who died for the sheep. Beside the 
still waters of
We rise for prayer. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing song. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the at the fire hall. <laughs> Come hungry. God's blessings to all of you. And um, as with that last song, um, it was very fitting as we heard about community and that we all have a wonderful message to send uh, to our community, to those people we live and work with every day, and that is the wonderful light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, his forgiveness and life. Um, we thank the band once again uh, for accompanying us this morning. Um, very delightful, and we thank them for that. It's nice to have them. And also we thank the kids for helping us out too um, with the hallelujah. Uh, God's blessings to them and to all of you. Uh, there may be a chance to still order cheesecake 
um, in the narthex. Uh, there may still be a chance to uh, help us out with the teacher kits, but those are both going away, so um, just be aware of that. And um, many other events and things taking place just um, that are in the bulletin. Also today, the Evangelism Stewardship Committee would like you to stay for that um, connections, um, conversation, and community um, by enjoying some coffee and treats um, that they will serve you as you leave the sanctuary today. God's blessings to all of you. the stars in the night I wonder at your lightning in the sky I shudder your glory is a blanket that covers every living thing and it feels like there's not enough praise inside of me With all these words, all my heart can sing is holy. You are holy. Jesus Christ, you bled your love, laid down yourself and gave me life. You made the chain, you hung it. Thank you.